Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Black sea bass has started, fluke will open, stripers and black drum are getting bigger, and our reef sites are getting better. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine with a lot to cover this week. First, on the reef sites. New materials were deployed at Manasquan Reef this week thanks to the Greater Point Pleasant Charter Boat Association. Money's raised from their Mako Mania and now Tuna Mania tournament with matching cash from the Sportfish Fund. It was contributed to an incredible deposit just a mile and a half off Manasquan Inlet this week. The 145 foot former commercial Menhaden boat, Carter's Creek, it came to rest along the ocean floor at about 11.45 a.m on Wednesday morning. Yes, I have numbers for you, but first, I had a chance to speak with uh, New Jersey's acting DEP commissioner, Sean LaTourette. He's acting, but he should be officially DEP commissioner within the next few days, couple of weeks. It's gotta go through the Senate process. But I did get a chance to talk to Sean, uh, and I asked Commissioner LaTourette about the reef program and what recreational fishing in general means to the state of New Jersey. And here's what he had to say. I see it as part of our cultural heritage, right? It's part of what is in the spirit of the people of this state. And I think to that end, the, the, the recreational fishing community kind of represents all of us, right? It's uh, this, this uh, weekend, we're gonna be doing the Governor's Surf Fishing Tournament uh, on Sunday, so that'll be, that'll be cool. And that, I think it's just part of who we are. Right? It's a critical part of our economy, right? not just from the commercial perspective and the, and the uh, billions of dollars that are generated every year by that segment of our economy and, and a segment of our economy that we need to protect and sustain long into the future, but the, the recreational economy too, supporting local businesses, helping to drive tourism, and I don't know, just being solidly Jersey. I will have more on that interview with Commissioner LaTourette at a later time. He gave me quite a bit of great information about the reef program, about recreational fishing, and he seems excited uh, about that reef program and working with uh, stakeholders, with us saltwater anglers in particular. Uh, as he did mention in his video, that Governor's Cup is going on this Sunday. So if you're a surf fishing fanatic, if you're gonna head down there to the, the uh, Governor's Cup on Sunday, good luck. And especially good luck to all those high school competitors out there. Of course, the Fisherman Magazine is back in sponsoring a plaque for the champions of the Governor's Cup this weekend. Catch them up. Uh, for details on that striped bass bonus program, for details on the Governor's Cup, the latest regulatory sheet, and everything else related to saltwater and freshwater fishing in the Garden State, hunting as well, uh, you can go to njfishandwildlife.com. That's the main website. A couple of people asking how they can get those striped bass bonus permits. njfishandwildlife.com. You'll get all the information. Oh, you wanted those numbers, didn't you? All right, here we go. 40 degrees north at 5.024 by 73 degrees west at 59.637. I snapped it with my Navionics app. So those are the official numbers. In fact, the state of New Jersey caught me. They almost threw me overboard. But those are the numbers for you if you want to go take a look at the way that big old boat is situated at Manasquan Reef. The other big news, of course, for this weekend is the start of New Jersey's fluke season, which gets underway on Saturday, May 22nd. Yes! You might be targeting those wrecks and reef sites. You could go out offshore uh, looking for fluke, but I, I'm sure that the best bet is going to be in the back bays and salty rivers this weekend. From the Navasink, Shark River, Manasquan, uh, in the northern half of the state, all the way down to Cape May uh, County, if you're looking at Ludlam uh, or Grassy Sound, anything like that. I'll be looking at Great Bay and Little Egg Harbor myself starting Saturday morning for the fluke opener. Now, I did speak to Captain Joe Rizzo of Barnegat Bay Fishing Charters uh, out of Barnegat, uh, out of Wiretown actually, but he was down clamming in Great Bay when I spoke to him the other day. He did give me this word of advice. You might want to keep this in mind. He said there was a lot of that slime, a lot of that snot grass. Uh, down there on the bottom. It's especially uh, plaguing for those of you who fish in Little Lake Harbor and Great Bay. I know that from my time fishing there. But it, you might want to consider that uh, if some of your back bay waters are prone to that, 
uh, it's a natural condition, but you wanna get your baits above that slime, right? So maybe take some shad darts and some bobbers if you wanna hook the minnow uh, to the shad dart just to keep it above the slime. Also adjust your jigging accordingly, but there's gonna be a good chance to stick some bigger fish in those back bays. Think uh, along some of those flats, uh, outside the creek mouths, uh, around the inlets, uh, and of course the back side of the sedges as well. I would expect uh, for this weekend, weekend opener, if you're heading down to Island Beach or maybe Corsons, uh, I'm, I'm sure that we're going to hear some fish jigged uh, in the surf as well. But it all gets underway finally this Saturday, May 26, uh, 22nd. Uh, Weather-wise, the, the midweek forecast for the weekend ahead looks pretty good too. Cloudy skies, possibility of rain in portions of New Jersey, Delaware Bay region on Saturday. A touch of southwest winds uh, in the forecast for Saturday, but even lighter northwesterlies on Sunday, which should do well uh, for you guys fishing in the back bay on that outgoing tide in the early morning. And I absolutely can't wait. Uh, now, don't forget about the Fisherman Magazine's Dreamboat Fishing Challenge that got underway starting May 1st. Uh, at last check, there were no, no summer flounder, no fluke entries from New York or in Delaware, where the fluke season has already been open. Um, nothing was entered in that members only fluke fishing tournament. As a matter of fact, I'm really shocked to see that we didn't have any bluefish entries from the state of New Jersey while we had that epic run, those big gators that were in, in the last few weeks. So if you are a member of the Fisherman Magazine, you're a paid subscriber, do not forget that Dreamboat contest because all it takes is one fish on the board at the end of the season to win a prize. The one who wins the most points gets that Steiger two, uh, 25 footer and a Yamaha 300. So you gotta be, you gotta fish it to be in it, to win it. And then of course there's our black drum battle. I mean, I, seriously, is this thing on? I, I mean, close to 200 people have entered the black drum battle to this point. Uh, plus it's open to subscribers uh, wherever you are uh, in all of our editions, but especially in New Jersey and Delaware Bay. And I don't think I've seen an official entry land on my desk. Uh, although I don't think I've seen my desk in a couple of weeks. Uh, and of course, like I said, I was away for the last few days as well, driving in the southeast. It was Mad Max and driving a road warrior trying to find gas along the way. But uh, folks, it's booming right now. So if you're going to be going out for Black Drum, make sure you enter. In fact, uh, since last week, I heard from the Nadobas uh, yet again. Uh, they were at it again since our last report. Mike, Do Mike Nadoba sent this photo of his son with an 88.6 pound Black Drum on the scale. Looks like it's over there at Jim's Bait and Tackle. Uh, I haven't seen an entry yet. Maybe Mike's in it. I'm not sure. But if you're going drumming this weekend, it should be a good weekend for it, and you're planning on bringing one of those boomers home, make sure you go to blackdrumbattle.com first. Sign up for that tournament. It's absolutely free. You could win a great prize package from the folks at Penn. It includes a trip on full ahead sport fishing with Captain Bob Cope next year. Subscribers, you're already in it, all right? You don't even have to go to Black Drum Battle, but if you catch one, take it into one of the tackle shops, look for the waste slips, send that information in. I hope to get that email because I wanna be giving away that prize and I wanna be seeing some more big drum photos in the coming days. Remember, that's on both sides of the Delaware as well. Although what I did find out, the big news coming out of Lewis Harbor Marina this week uh, is not inside the bay, but out around 100 fathoms just north of the, uh, of the Wilmington, Bluefin. Some good sized Bluefin. Colleen Bailey, Greer, Wakefield, and JT here were on the Gringo Loco and checked in with Amanda and crew at the Lewis Harbor uh, uh, Marina uh, in Lewis Harbor. Uh, Blue and white Joe shoots getting it done for the Gringo Loco crew, so that's good news. In fact, while I was climbing off of Mution on Wednesday after the reef deployment, I bumped into, uh, into Willie Davis who was doing the last bits of spit and polish there on Captain Mark's uh, Blue Runner. Uh, he said, yeah, while the giant quota is done, they're gearing up to head offshore looking for some of those tuna. So I would expect that to be in the coming days. Uh, a friend of mine surf fishing down in South Jersey, he swears he saw a bluefin in close. He said, I saw that sickle tail coming out and he swears it was in the surf line. Um, so who knows? We're getting a lot of bait. I've got more on that too, but I, I did mention being out of town for a few days. Uh, so I have, if I haven't returned your phone call, your text message, your Facebook post, your YouTube note, your Instagram post, uh, smoke signal, mail del delivery, whatever it was, I apologize. But while I was gone, things sure did get interesting. In fact, I think I was just crossing the Carolina line from north to south 
when a buddy of mine called and said, you know, action's getting really good. I said, of course it's getting really good. The cat's away. Uh, but I did hear from about Hunter Renwick, uh, son of Ron over at Jetty Ghost, uh, hunters from New Mil Milford, PA. He landed a bison the other night in the surf uh, uh, using his grandfather's reel, fresh grumpy clam, uh, super fast release, no hero shot here. They had it in the sand, unhooked it, and got this shot. Big shoulders on that striper. So we are finding some good fish uh, along the front stretches now, in and out of the surf line. Uh, might be time to break out those woods, uh, some of those pencils. I know it's starting to get um, get that time of year where we should start seeing some, uh, some bunker busting action along the coast. Uh, Jeff Merrill, he had a good trip out of, the, out of the Manasquan Inlet heading into the weekend. He took out the bunker spoons. Not a lot of people talking about fishing with those bunker spoons right now, but they're working. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Tony Maja himself had a 50, uh, an over 50 pound striper caught and released last week on one of the spoons. And Jeff said he had them uh, 40 to 45 inches. He estimated 28 to 38 pounds. He also got spooled what he called a sea monster. Could have been a tuna. I don't know, could have been a thresher. Uh, it seems a little early, but Jeff did say that the, uh, the bunker were in thick. He saw a couple of swirls up top too. So it looks like uh, it's just about ready to blow up with stripers on those bunker, uh, the bunker busting madness. I would expect it happens this weekend, probably while people like me are out in the back searching for flatfish. Tough decisions, right? Do I start the fluke season on Saturday or do I go out chasing big stripers? Well, I'll tell you what, this might change your mind. Uh, my friend Johnny Luchke, he was fishing with uh, Captain Dave Goldman the other day, caught and released this spawned out 54 inch striped bass. He estimated it at right around 50 pounds. That's a good fish. Not just the only one I heard either. Chuck Manny has been getting it done again. Uh, I talked to him on Wednesday. He had two 50s on Wednesday. That's a good sign. It's a good sign for us because we're kicking off the Northeast Striped Bass Study again on Monday, May 24th. I've got details on that big event, but first let's check in with my buddy George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, finally some beautiful weather here in Northeast Pennsylvania, a little bit more seasonal, just in with a little bit of a nuisance wind here and there, but some great fishing now, finally. Uh, lots of guys are getting out. We're seeing lots of folks checking in and a couple of great fish coming our way. I did want to remind you guys, just because the weather is getting nice, don't give up on the trout fishing. Lots of great trout. Guys have been posting all kinds of brown trout and rainbows. Still some great fishing out there, so don't give up on that. I wanted to thank James Sanfilippo for checking in. He was out in New Jersey and he's been posting trout day after day after day. He's been catching some real beauties and uh, James says he's been catching them on some Joe's flies uh, that the one quarter ounce in the March Brown pattern and also those Potsky ball of fire salmon eggs he says number 10 hook no weight and it's been proving real successful for him so great job there James and keep those those fish coming now I do want to talk about uh, the Delaware River you know last week I think we talked uh, everybody was kind of giving up on Chad they said that the runs over but I'll tell you what we said hang in there and it did turn around we're seeing lots of guys catching great fish doubles triples lots of action going on and even a couple really nice row in the mix so don't give up on the shad either now right behind them don't forget we got the stripers chasing them up so there's a really good striper bite uh, happening right now and will be going on in the next few weeks matter of fact this time next week I'll be out there catching some of them on my own so we'll report on that next week hopefully um, also on the Delaware we got the stripers but also the catfish bite lots of cats going on and don't forget, even some flatheads down there on the Delaware, they're starting to come up really good as well. But talking about flatheads, let's move over to the Susquehanna. Um, I do have to check in with a, a good friend of mine, Stan Sean, said, George, the flathead fishing's great. He sent me this beautiful pick of a really nice, chunky flathead, and he's getting ready for a tournament in the next couple of days, so he was out pre-fishing that. So if you want to get in those giant uh, flathead catfish, jump over to the Susquehanna and give that a try as well. Now, don't forget the local lakes here they're all doing well we're starting to see everything from striper walleye bass smallmouth you name it if it swims this is the time of year where you can just get out i hope you're out getting on them too from pennsylvania i'm george your pokemon outdoors guy this monday morning may 24th look for a fleet in the lower hudson maybe near statue of liberty maybe down along the raritan bay off sandy hook but we are putting together i think we've got five or six boats out there in search of jumbo stripers. We're hoping to find a couple of good candidates. 
uh, to, to track these fish using mini PSAT devices, those satellite tags. We have two of these tags right now. So we're gonna use two tags on Monday or Tuesday, and then we're gonna track those fish for four or five months just to figure out where they go and when they come back. We're hoping to get another couple of tags for later on this season. We wanna go back off of uh, Montauk or Block Island, maybe even Cape Cod Canal this year. We've also got another couple of ideas in the mix as well, but we do hope to do more. Um, and we'll have more information uh, following next week's trip uh, in video form. It'll surely be in the July edition of the Fisherman Magazine uh, and more video features to come. But you can find out more information about that Northeast Striped Bass Study by going to thefisherman.com uh, selecting the topics, the topics tab at the back, scroll down to striped bass study, you'll get all the details, everything that we've printed regarding this northeast striped bass study. But I, like I said, five or six boats gathered at bars uh, in Highlands uh, sometime early Monday morning. Look for us out there because we're going to be in search of jumbo striped bass. If you're on them, certainly text me. You know, every good deed, it comes back around. Don't forget your saltwater registration if you're going out fishing this weekend. It's absolutely free in the state of New Jersey. All you have to do is go to NJ or, or saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. Now, if you're crossing into New York or if you're crossing into Delaware, make sure you check in with those folks as well. Uh, the New York State uh, Saltwater Registry is also absolutely free, but you really should get that registry. And if you're going into Delaware, there's nothing really reciprocal there. They've got a license. So if you're going down into Delaware, go to the DNREC website to find out all the information for what you need uh, to be fishing legally over there in Delaware waters. For a rundown on some of the best locations to find summer flounder or fluke here in the Garden State, be sure to pick up a copy of the May edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's out in your favorite tackle shop, local newsstands, of course, all of your Wawa locations, and get all the details. Uh, look for Sloan on the cover with that brace of good fish. Uh, don't forget, uh, Island Beach State Park, you've got that two fish bag limit, uh, or that, that bag limit that, that includes a smaller size. So if you're looking for a keeper, and you've got your Island Beach buggy permit, get out there early this weekend and look for some of those smaller sizes. All this great gulp that continues to come out, I'm not sure which of the buckets to actually use. You got the fire tails. This is my toughest decision over the next couple of days, but I'll figure it out. And uh, I'm sure you will as well. While I sit here and try to figure out my exact fluke poison for the weekend, I want you to meet Jake Dawson. Uh, he's one of the guys from Pure Fishing. Uh, we've talked for the last couple of weeks about what's new from Gulp and what's new from, uh, from, uh, from X9, the Berkeley Braid. Well, let's talk to Jake now and figure out what these guys do to come to these local fishing grounds and figure out how to give us all these tough choices for the weekend ahead. Take it away, Jake and catch them up. As a steward of the Berkeley brand, we love getting out, um, obviously testing, catching fish behind the science that we all put in and invest into our brands and our products, spending time with the local captains, spending time with the local tackle shops, uh, getting to see our products um, catch fish firsthand, talk new products, talk about ideas, talk about um, insights that we can convert into next year and the year after that's new products. It's just always great to get out in the water and get the feedback firsthand with the people um, that spend the most time with them. And in this case, it was some fantastic captains and anglers. Yes, it was my first opportunity trying to catch a fluke in sea bass. We had an amazing day on the water. We caught a variety of species. Um, great opportunity to, to firsthand be able to see our gulp products uh, play um, and, and get used in the water. So that was absolutely uh, amazing. Big things are coming for gulp here in the next 12 to uh, 24 months. We've got a pretty robust innovation pipeline. Uh, I think we actually got a couple more ideas today on the water and we got to test some new things that uh, we're going to be excited to bring out. So always good to get out uh, and talk to the anglers and to try new products and to get some ideas that spurn uh, innovation a couple years from now. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.